with you this afternoon to talk about point-to-point -point protocol. Point-to-point -point protocol. We're, we hear an awful lot about SIP these days, but wanted to bring back an oldie but giddy, and that would be point-to-point -point protocol. And of course, it's still used very, very much today. Point-to-point -to -point protocol is simply the protocol that's used primarily to connect uh, two routers together over a wide area link, and that's what we're going to be discussing today. So, to get on to point-to-point -point protocol, here we go. The point-to-point -point protocol defines a standard method. Is totally, it is absolutely a standard method for transporting multi-protocol datagrams. And so what would that mean to us, multi-protocol datagrams? Meaning that you can send virtually anything, whether it's going to be voice, video, data, whatever you may have, a multi-protocol datagram, which we've discussed in other modules, but those are uh, UDP types of transport protocols, over point-to-point -point links. So we're expecting a straight shot from one router to the other. Now the point-to-point -point protocol is comprised of three main components. The first component is a method for encapsulating the multi-protocol datagram itself. The second would be a link control protocol, which we'll spend some more time discussing, for establishing, configuring, and testing the data link connection. And then finally, the third would be a family of network control protocols, or so-called NCPs, for establishing and configuring different network layer protocols in case those were need to be utilized to be sent across the point to the point to point protocol you'll often hear hear this referred to as ppp point to point protocol ppp and here's what it would look like where we simply have a router here and here's our serial one interface right here now we're going going across a wan circuit right here, so here's our WAN circuit. And now here we are going through the WAN circuit, and now we're hitting the S2 or Serial 2 interface on this router right here. So here's the Serial 1 interface going across the WAN circuit, hitting the S2 interface on the other side. Some of the various aspects of the point-to-point -point protocol is that it's designed for simple links which transport pack packets between two peers. And here are the two peers, these two routers right here. These links provide full duplex and simultaneous bidirectional operation and are assumed to deliver packets in order. Here's why we can assume that the packets are delivered in order. Generally, packet out-of-order packet delivery only occurs whenever we've got multiple routers and multiple destinations or multiple advert um, multiple tables rather to those routers. So let's say that our routing configuration looks something like this. Well, the first packet, let's say in a voice stream, may be sent in this direction could very well go in this direction. Whereas the second, and let me go ahead and change uh, the ink color here just to make it a little bit more vivid. Make the ink color blue. The second, the very second voice packet could be sent in this direction. It could go here to this router first, then over to this router, then to this router, then to this router, and then to this router. So that's what can happen whenever we have multiple routers in a network. But that's not we ha what we have in this particular configuration. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and erase those so as not to confuse us. And those are all gone. And so the idea here is that we are talking about only two peers, one, two. Let me get my pointer back here. 
So there, here's peer number one and peer number two. The PPP encapsulation has been carefully designed to, re to retain rather compatibility with the most commonly used supporting hardware. I, in fact, in my travels, have, have never really run into a modern uh, router that is not capable of taking advantage of the point-to-point -point protocol. This point-to-point -point protocol can support high-speed implementations. The link layer control, the LCP for establishing configuring and testing the data link connectivity is designed to be sufficiently versatile to be portable to a wide range and a wide variety of environments. So PPP provides a link control protocol called LCP. The link control protocol is used to automatically agree upon the encapsulation format options and handling everything from uh, various limits on the sizes of the packets uh, it, to detect a loopback condition in case that would occur, and, and other common misconfigurations, and w in that case would terminate the link. So if it's impossible, by definition, to set up a point-to-point -point protocol connectivity incorrectly, because simply the LCP would jump in, realize that there was a misconfiguration error, and would simply drop the link. A determination is made when a link is functioning properly and when it is failing. So if the LCP, the link control protocol, which is continually monitoring the PPP, if it is seen, if, if it detects that there is a failure, then that is going to be reported and then ultimately the connectivity dropped. Now under this, you have a family of network control protocols or NCPs for establishing and configuring different network layer protocols. So these point-to-point -point links tend to exacerbate many problems with the current family of network protocols. For instance, uh, let's say an assignment and a management of IP addresses, which is a problem uh, even in LAN environments, is especially difficult over circuit-switched point-to-point links. Um, uh, one quick example that comes to mind is dial-up modem servers. And don't see a lot of those anymore, but uh, again, I told you this little bit of old school here, but we still wanted to, to visit it. The problems are handled by a family of network control protocols, NCP, which each manage the specific needs required by their respective network layer protocols. In conclusion, it's contended that PPP links to be easy to configure. By definition, the standard defaults handle all common communications. The implementator can specify improvements to the default configuration, which are automatically communicated to the peer without operator in intervention. Finally, the operator may explicitly configure options for the link, which enable the link to operate in environments where it would otherwise be impossible. So the point-to-point -point protocol when rolled out in a standard fashion, is fairly straightforward. However, it can be modified greatly in order to enhance the ultimate goal of what the engineer was intending. So these self-configuration mechanisms are implemented through an extensible option of, of negotiation mechanism. And all that's really saying is that each end of the link describes the other, its capabilities and requirements. So in other words, S1 here would describe to S2 its capabilities and requirements. And although the option negotiation mechanism described in the link control protocol, the same facilities are designed to be used by other control protocols, especially the families of NCPs. So once the link control protocol has established, configured, and tested the data link connect connection, then the NCPs, the network control protocols, can flavor this point-to-point -point protocol itself in order to make sure that the specific requirements of the link are met. And again, it's doing that through the L LCP. And so there you have a brief overview of, a, of an oldie but goodie, the point-to-point -point protocol. And hope very much that you enjoyed the module today. And we'll be diving further into these 
WAN protocols and look forward to seeing you on the next module. Thanks so much. Thad White, Cross University. Talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Thad White, Cross University. Hope you're having a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.